like to give you some news about justice. Now, there was a porn production company called Girls Do Porn. In it, several women were lured to San Diego where they engaged in doing pornography shoots with the promises of money. They were given drugs, they were given alcohol, they were given you know, very dense legal contracts to sign that were very jargon filled and very confusing for someone who does not speak legalese. And as a result, these women performed pornography on camera. Some of them were even raped upwards of for seven hours. And this is something that has now gone through the court system. And this is a, a terrible story, but one that needs to be told with regards to the truth about the pornography industry. Now, a short time later, those videos that were taken started appearing on different websites, you know, free sites like Pornhub, despite the promise that the footage would only ever be distributed via DVD, but it went immediately to the website and then from there appeared on other free websites around the world. Now, it's important to remember in this case that Girls Do Porn was a company owned by MindGeek. MindGeek is the Montreal-based company that owns Pornhub. That is under investigation by the Canadian government from everything from sex trafficking to child pornography. Now, many of the women who appeared in these, uh, they say that uh, they have been found by viewers, had their docs spread, they've received harassment, resulting in you know very severe harassment, their personal information being out, and some of them even coming to suicidal th uh, thoughts because of the harassment that they have suffered from these actual porn users, people who actually consumed these uh, largely non-consensual pornography that they did. Now, basically this started in 2016 where, you know, two dozen women were exploited, uh, who were, two dozen women who were sexually exploited in this company, they, uh, they got together and filed a lawsuit against the Girls Do Porn site owners, Michael Pratt, 36, and Matthew Wolf, 37, as well as an actor and recruiter, Andre Garcia, who they also accuse of rape. Now, what's very interesting about this case is not only did the women win, which it seemed which seemed likely from the outset. They gave, this This came out in January 2020, the girls do porn women were paid 12.7 million in damages. But here's where it gets different. The judge took the materials of them that were recorded and gave them the rights to it, which means that material no longer belongs to girls do porn. It belongs to those women. Now this opens the door for them to use copyright to go after other distributors distributors of this disgusting material. So we could possibly look forward to more lawsuits against pornography sites about it in the future. Now, the San Diego Superior Court judge, Kevin Enright, called the operation, and I quote, fraudulent scheme that targeted young women who are mostly students with careers ahead of them and who have only even considered defendant solicitations to film pornographic video due to some immediate pressing financial need. Well, that kind of sounds like the pornography industry in general, and that's because it is. Now, the men who perpetrated this crime, two of them are in prison, one of them is on the run. The men behind a Girls Do Porn face federal charges of sex traffic and producing child porn because one of the actresses, or one of the victims, was only 17 years old at the time of the filming. Now, you'd think they'd be smart enough to check IDs or verify that stuff, but apparently they're not. Wolf is in custody and Garcia has been sentenced. Pratt fled from the US and is now a fugitive. They say he's likely in New Zealand right now and a $50,000 reward is being offered by the FBI for tips that lead to his capture. Now I bring this up because Girls Do Porn was a 
was a work that definitely got around that people heard about. It was, it was fairly popular. And then all this time, a lot of it was non-consensual. At least one woman reported being forced to perform for up to seven hours. The, the thought of that is absolutely excruciating. And I sincerely hope that the people who do stuff like this, who do these kinds of things to women, that there's a special place in hell for them. And it's important to, re to remind people that this is not an exception. This is largely the rule about the way the pornography industry operates. There's a great deal of non-consensual sexual activity in these films. And quite often performers are using drugs or alcohol in order to perform scenes. And what a violent, hateful industry and the, the very long history of it being linked to not just sexual violence, but to trafficking, uh, prostituting women, etc. It's important to understand all these connections when looking at this story. So that's just something to keep in mind that a lot of people out there heard of Girls Do Porn. But it's important to know the story that went on behind the scenes, how terrible it really was, and how abusive it actually is. And to know this is not the exception, this is pretty much the rule in the pornography industry. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.